All right, we're going to play some Crimson Cutlass here again. I'm going to continue my adventures with Henri. I'm going to be generating these tales using the rules of Crimson Cutlass. Everything is going to be generated with the deck of cards and my dice rolls. And add a little bit of my imagination as I edit in. The overall theme will be the Reformation. Of course, I will have added the usual amount of viciousness and bawdiness along with the Reformation. Now, my character, Henri, is cunning and dashing. He's a gentleman but uh, of, of social rank two, which is about as low as you can get besides uh, destitute or often some affair where you're not worried about anything uh, but your affair. And uh, I am French, and uh, here are my skills that I have in the game. Uh, skills are on or off. They're very, very binary. I am either literate or illiterate. In this case, I'm a literate man. And uh, swaggering techniques are combat techniques that are picked up uh, through adventuring. And then the ignoble deeds. Once I check off all nine ignoble deeds, I'll go up to level one. I'll get that all-important first make roll. And I'll also improve some skills by doing that. The wounds are very simple in the game. The wounds are either on or off. You're either wounded or unwounded. If you are wounded and get wounded again, you are dead. So I started this mission in episode one, and I wanted sort of a free-form storytell here as I go through. I was approached by a Russian, Ethan Ivan, EI as I call him. And the man is uh, was proven himself to be quite insane and foolhardy. And he's after a Fabergé egg that was given as a gift uh, from Russia to France uh, more than 100 years ago. But the Russians regret uh, that gift actually um, being given. And instead, uh, uh, the Russian czar would like the gift returned. However, he doesn't think uh, France has been a very good ally throughout the years, and they probably haven't. Russia is uh, fixed in a former age as a medieval empire where France is becoming more of a modern power with an absolute monarch in the ruler. And uh, as I said, the theme is going to be more of a Reformation style theme. We've already had our first event where we have um, uh, realized that there is corruption in the church all throughout France, and that is turning people off in their piety. We are opposed in our mission to go and steal that egg uh, by the brother, the bastard brother, older brother of uh, EI, uh, Adam Ivan and Adam. He's a gentleman pirate. He is the type of person with so much natural charisma that with two tankards veil and five minutes, he'd easily wile me over to his own side and betray my, um, my patron. So hopefully you won't have to deal with that. But again, the mission is a burglary. We're heading on the road down to Paris. And the first encounter we had, a justice encounter, which means we are not... Um, we will not have knaves. Uh, we will treat those in tens. That was a very good card. Also, in the mission itself, I flipped a, what, a death under the mission card, which means I cannot die on this mission, no matter how bad it can be. I can be thoroughly dismembered, but I cannot die. Hmm, mixed blessing there, maybe. And um, in the first encounter, we met a gentleman familiar to us, uh, the Mayor Flambeau. And uh, he was traveling with uh, Baron John New uh, Dacom, and he was transporting a prisoner, a Johann Hugo. Along the way, we also ran into a carnival type of atmosphere where they were doing street performances of one of Johann Hugo, a known reformist, one of his most popular play where he satirizes the church. And the mayor asked us if we would go in and break it up with clubs. But during that encounter, the mayor himself started firing pistols on the crowd, and one of them could have killed me if not for an unnamed actor took the blow. But I was knocked unconscious and waiting sentence in prison. Now I could go to digression tables, which would be very ugly on my character. But instead, what I'll do is I'll go to the encounter chart here and I'll flip my first encounter of the game. And it is the fool. I was chatting with the guards, asking them why the food was so delicious. They mocked me, but later confided that one of the royal chefs had been imprisoned. The man certainly knew his spices. They spit at me, but I dodged. One of the two a queer lad whose eyes seemed to focus in two places not on me, said that when Mayor Flambeau is elevated to the peerage, he will burn this place to the ground. Huh, no more prisons. Before I could signal huzzah, the second guard, almost a twin, interjected, yes, every crime will be punished by death. I asked them if that included being dull, which quieted their snickering. All the major 
read the result right out of the book, see what the next flip after that would be. It is an Ace of Swords. Now, originally when I set up this mission and I read, I thought that because it's a burglary, uh, in a simple mission, burglaries usually are, I would skip phase B. But instead, I misread that as starting in phase B. Well, there's no foul in that. Uh, the, the deck is used to stimulate the imagination. It is not supposed to be the de facto um, decree of everything that happens. So I'm just going to play with it like I did. And instead of skipping phase B, which would have been a tremendous advantage, I started in phase B, which was actually a, dis a disadvantage, but I will take it as I take it. But this ace here, I go down the list. Is it a king, queen, knight, neighbor, 10? It is not. Is the ace in phase? Is it uh, ace two or three in phase A? No, I'm in phase B. I need a four, five, or six. So the ace is just going to count as a double ace card. Whenever you get the first flip of a new deck, I usually treat the previous one just by heuristics as an ace of cups. So I have an ace of cup followed by the ace of spade, uh, ace of swords. And uh, yes, spades in another game. And I have a flipped two two aces in a row generating a campaign event previous card is the same rank as this card so i go to the uh, the uh, into the book and i look up uh, different uh campaign events that can happen and uh, i'll pick one that is ace ace as a campaign event let's see if i can find it in the book real, uh, quick enough I'm going to try to do very little editing on the game itself. I want to be tutorial, but I also want to tell, tell a good story in all this. So I find out while I'm in prison that, um, that aces res uh, are, oh, aces deal with monarchs and quarrels and appointments. Hmm. So I find out that the mayor of Paris, part of the reason why he's cracking down on the reformists, and I'm now a reformist myself, in, from one of the ignobles that I check, I find out that he's cracking down on the uh, reformists because he wants to join the high court. He wants to have more lands bestowed on him. He doesn't like his position. He was probably not from a noble family himself to begin with. A lot of the mayors of towns were just men who made a lot of money and bought their positions. And he wants to buy himself right into the nobility. And that's why he's cracking down. And I learned this from another prisoner. I'm going to add the prisoner of Johann Hugo, the person who wrote the play I satirized. You shouldn't taunt them. They're just pawns. The remark came from a cellmate. There were many in this squalor conditions. Horse stalls had more comfort and better aroma. The man introduced himself, Johann Hugo. It sounded familiar. Wait, you're the fellow who wrote that parody. <laughs> I laughed. Well, until someone tried to shoot me. Johann made comment that he saw me clubbing the constables. Not sure if he knew I was one of them just moments before. I introduce myself and I say that, uh, you know, I am uh, I'm Henri and uh, I cannot claim that I am of any merit or any uh, heritage to, or any uh, appreciable uh, event in my life. I'm not famous in any way. And he says, I am uh, I am Johan uh, Hugo and I am famous uh, and infamous in every way, unfortunately. But he takes a liking to me and I take a liking to him. And so we arrange an escape together. And since nobody can actually die on this mission, the escape becomes a little bit more plausible for me. I'm going to go over my character here just so you can see it. And I'm going to flip a card for combat here. And I'm going to try to escape using the defensive action. Say the guard was a little lax. And here I go with a card flip. A two of swords. That two of swords is going to represent. I go to defensive. Defensive action, two of swords. It is not inverted. Don't, make me, uh, don't let me uh, forget when they're banes. Two of swords, a two defensive. I leap behind cover and fire a pistol. So the guard, the guard comes up to find out what we're doing, talking. He tells us to stop, and I and I snatch his pistol from him. I'm a spy, and I probably could conceal maybe even my own pistol in a boot when I came in. That's a better part of the story. So I pull the I pull the concealed uh, palm pistol out of my boot, and I fired it at the guard. Uh, he and if on success on the dispatch, but it's a roll of the twelve fail, and the enemy is vigilant. NBC's double the defensive modifier. Now a double zero is still going to be a zero here, but I can pick up my first swagger in a roll of a twelve. Let's get some dice rolls going here. Two dice, looking for a twelve, and it's an eight. Well, I pulled my pistol, but it misfired. If you have a pistol in a boot, it probably got wet all of this time. One of the Tweedles, D or dumb, stumbled as he approached the gate of our cell. I sprang and grabbed the keys off his belt. He pawed at me to get them back. 
as I grabbed his collar and held his face against the bars. With the keys tossed to Johan, I employed my Card A, a palm-sized pistol I carried in my boot. I held it to his temple and asked for cooperation. The jailer instead reached for the gun, clicked the hammer, and a spark scorched the side of his face. Unfortunately, the perspiration in my shoe left the powder too wet to flash. I would remind myself to find a better place to hide it. That or buy some talc. Next card coming out. I'm still trying to defensive and still get an escape card. A chariot. I read what happens with the chariot. The chariot tells me, if possible, more opponents arrive at the battle. Ah, perhaps these n n people knocked out and grapple rise up. I referee decides he went on. Now I'm fighting. I'll double the guards. He calls for an assistance. Now I have two men that I'm wrestling with here. Again, taking defensive actions. And I got a king, but it's a bane. A king, when the card is inverted, it counts as a bane. A defensive king bane. Ooh, let's read it. It says, The scene becomes a tangle of conversing passage with restricted decks and cabin space, dense foliage, maids of side alleys. So, myself and Johan are now in the obviously down, going deeper and deeper into this Bastille-like prison. Down the corridors, people are putting their hands out and pleading for us to uh, have mercy and let us go. And uh, I will uh, success and sort where out where everyone is lurking. Or fail roll and player must select a regular next round. If the player character is not of trait cunning, I am, the difficulty would increase by four. Regardless, the difficulty of all banes the player receives in the continuing action are increased by two. It's becoming a lot harder for me to fight here. I need a five and the advantage is architect. I am not and shipwright and architect. And because I'm not that, I'm not rolling three dice. But because I do have the advantage of um, just trying to make a five, let me see if I can make it. Ha! <laughs> a four. Man, when it rains, it pours. This is some of the worst luck I've seen in ever in a game. But if you've seen the last uh, mission as well, that was terrible luck. But we're going to continue, and we're going to let the bad luck happen, because there's no, even though that was a bane, there is no bad result except for the fact that banes are now increased by two. With the cell open, Johan and I raced down in the direction we felt was escape. I knew I should have strangled the buffoon of a jailer, but Johan stayed my grip. Only now I could hear the man bellow and his second voice of his brother responded. We had ourselves a chase. As we passed other cells, both barred and doored open, I unlocked a few to add more to our company and to add the distraction was one of these recreants that made notice that in fact we were traveling in the wrong direction, deeper into the dungeon. Now, what do we know? We needed to reverse course, but that was back toward the men who by now were carrying pikes. I'm still trying to fight and face uh, two men and get away from them. The Hermit card. Now I read the Hermit card, it tells me a secondary event that happens to the player character, the wreck decides the details. Interesting. Now I could have uh, Johan uh, have some allies appear, and that probably would help me. What I'll do is I'll have a secondary event happen that I realize that Johan uh, Hugo, or no, that I, I encounter my uh, my my friend, my patron. I've run into him, and he um, he is actually was in prison lower, but had bought his escape as a Russian national. And I run into him, and then I realize now it's the three of us traveling through the dungeon maze here. E.I., my lad, didn't know you were taken to. We found my patron. From the dried blood on his cheeks and bruises on his knuckles, he gave as good as he got. As a foreign national, a man of possible wealth, his accommodations were more comfortable, but also signaled the end of our descent. Nothing left to do but turn around and assail. I need, I'm, I'm facing two men and I need to escape. I, I either need to dispatch or knock out two men or get that escape roll for the group. Press my card, the moon. The major tarot just simply appear and influence the play. If, it was, if I was playing with a group of players, I would get a major tarot, it would still be my turn. I would still get another card until I get a minor card from the deck. A moon card. Uh, confused, until the deck reshuffles initiative decided at random with each character in combat considered uh, the same. Now, this uh, this would happen, this is sort of an old throwback to some of the earlier rules, especially when some of the opponents were taking action, but it, it still would have an advantage in that I could take my action, and again, if I was playing a group, I wasn't playing solo, we wouldn't go right around the table, but we would decide the um, order of the events in random order. In this case, it's not going to affect me too much since I'm just playing uh, solo as Henri. And here comes my uh, card in the game. 
Again, we're on the road from Paris, and we're trying to break out of prison. A queen, but it's a bane. A defensive queen. Now, uh, did I fail and have to take? Let me look at that last card I flipped. I think it was a fail. Yes. Or fail, the player must take a regular. So that's a queen, bane, irregular. But bane irregulars are, you know, they sound cool, but they're really not. You step blindly right into opponent's right cross of his sword hill. Ouch. Fail and fall with a vicious wound. If, uh... Even if you succeed, you must select a regular actions next round. If the player character is not a skilled brawler, and I'm not, the difficulty increases by four. Regardless, the difficulty of all Banes received in the continuing action increase, increases by two. Now, I can increase it by two from the last time and two from this time. So this would be a total of four, because I'm not a brawler. I need a seven. I'm not stout. If I was stout of a trait, I would roll uh, three dice not two, but I'm not uh, stout of trade, so therefore I'm rolling just a seven on two dice, up four is an 11, up two is a 13, or I've taken that vicious wound, and it is a 10. A vicious wound across the chin, across the chin. it's gonna be tough for Henri. Now I have the fact that my two friends, uh, E.I. and Johan are dragging me behind. I stepped right into one. Second time in a day I was unconscious. Forever after, I would have an eye that too frequently blinked. When a sailor later would nickname me Blinky, he said that he had a dog but with the same fault. I reminded that poor fellow how important the ability to swim was on the water. As we both tumbled overboard, he would drown. Oh well, no more thereafter would anyone call me by a dog's name except in respect. Now I could stop it here since uh, I could let them uh, uh, pull me out to safety if I want to continue to tail. But I'm going to take another still. I'm going to leave the irregular for the moment, and I'm going to go back to the defensive actions, and I'm going to flip a defensive card to see if we can get away here. And it is an eight. An eight. Now, the suit would only come into play if it was a, uh, a non-player action or if, um, if I was uh, having to take a random card based on the suit. An eight. An eight defensive. Engage several opponents, making them adopt a defensive posture. Now, my jaw is probably a bit broken here. Fully broken jaw. Gosh, I'm not going to be as handsome a man anymore. Then sprint to safety. Success in your character escapes further battle. On a roll of ten, kayaking style. It is not a bane, so I'm not subtracting two. So a ten on two dice. Can I finally get away? A Fifteen. So finally, after all those cards, I got away. I wasn't sure if I or my companions did the finishing blows. I was groggy, but that never hurt my ability to brawl. Both E.I. and Johan would, over the next few days, take to waltzing. When I asked them why, with such glee, they would remark they were practicing my fencing techniques, the ones I had shown them. Apparently, I instinctively had quite the dodge, duck, and spin when I clashed swords. I joined them in a jig with refrains of overhead pistol shots. It was good to be free again and outdistance the pursuit. Wow, that was a tough battle and I took a wound. Now that wound is going to stay with me. It's not going to be something that's going to, uh, it's going to disappear easily. There ain't no magic in this game. The way you heal that wound is you finish the mission. So I'm going to continue wounded, but I should check in noble for this. And I'm going to say it's personal risk and audacity in order to escape from this prison environment to get away from the mayor's men. There's my little check there. And we're going to move on. And I go back to my old world map. Now, I have actually moved the story just a little bit because I've met Johan. And if I go over to the religious turmoil here, and I might be accelerating this fast. I'm going to roll a die. One to five, six to seven, and eight. Let me roll a die here. And I got myself a seven. A F. Now, reading an F, an F is a confiscation of church lands. So we find out that the crown is taking advantage of this event, the popularity of the church, and it starts to confiscate lands around Paris. And now it seems a little bit more strange that the mayor himself is opposed to this when some of the lands around Paris are being confiscated and added to the crown. Hmm. Intrigue shall follow. I am escaped with my two friends and we are on the road to Paris. We continued our road trip. The snow was piling up. 
A carriage was stuck ahead. By now we had a small party of refugees, though Johan called us Easter Pilgrims, which was a better cover story. We went to help the coachman out of the drift. We all agreed such and such was unseasonable. When a man has nothing to say, he nervously comments on the weather. In the coach, I saw someone peek out. Just the eyes, I believe, I saw under the hood. A gal. I winked, and she quickly shut the drapes. She must have been young. Johan is traveling with us, and I am moving with my next encounter of the game. And I have flipped a Knight of Swords. A Knight of Swords. So, a knight is in phase. We're going to meet somebody else. This is probably a point in the adventure where um, Johan um, is going to leave the group. He's too high a figure to be traveling with us, especially when it's going to be some sort of thief activity. Johan Hugo had a following. Many knew who he was. He knew as well as we that his celebrity was not conducive for our burglary crew. He knew we were criminals or as suspected as much. He never asked our trade, which behind the weather is the second most topic of conversation around a dinner stew. At the first real fork in the King's Highway, Johan said his goodbyes. I think I will actually miss him. E.I. was fine enough company, paid well for meals, but never a room at the Traveler's Inns. Yet the Russian was too eager to throw a fist or pull a sword. I wondered if that was why Johan had to leave. Now Hugo was no priest, but as a layman, his recitations of the Gospels were more compelling than the pulpit friar. As he left, he handed me a pamphlet. He did not ask if I could read. It was the first book I ever owned. The Psalms. 23, 3-4, he leads me on paths that are right for the good of his name. Passages were written in French, not Latin. I ask Hugo, will I burn for carrying this? Not in hell, my friend, was his reply. Now, knight, and it's an inverted knight, is somebody who's opposed to us, and uh, Adam would like us to stop this mission at once. And the knight's name is uh, Gabriel. Now, he's not actually a knight knight. Uh, because I flipped a sword, he probably is a soldier. So I'm just going to say he's a horse guardsman. So we got a horse guardsman here of Gabriel. And Gabriel says that uh, he's, uh, he, he's a friend of a friend who uh, knows Adam. And he says that, uh, you know, you need, to, you, need to, you need to stop this mission at once. This is not going to be something that... Uh, your your uh, your older brother is going to appreciate, nor is your father going to appreciate. And then Ethan probably gets uh, and screaming mad at that to be confronted in such a way. You know, how dare you confront me? I'm a I'm a member of the court, and yes, a distant member of the court. So we're going to go right into another duel here with Gabriel. Now I'm going to I'm going to put Gabriel. Now I've had very little luck in duels, but I will go ahead and. Uh, and add no defensive modifier, and I will just make him straight up a regular combat. And I'm going to use a calculated action this time. I'm going to go ahead and pull my pistol and see what I can do with that. So let me flip a card on calculated battle here. The Emperor. Now the Emperor tells me that disheartened to disorder the enemy until the deck reshuffle, enemies lose their uh, defensive modifier. This card canceled by the tower. So as soon as we start to attack him, he starts to back off and says, wait a second, no, now guys, I wasn't here to start a brawl. I'm not really a supporter of your, uh, your brother. And uh, do I want to rob him for his purse? I say, no, 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 give me your hat. If you give me your hat, a king's hat, um, I, will, uh, I will be able to, you can leave in peace. See if he'll agree to that. Now there are some tables in the actual Cutlass game that can be used for this. Let me see if I can find one. It's a uh, uh, believable falsehood to create an audience. Uh, double talk to a noble of the assembly. It's mm, not really what I'm looking for. Ah, here it is. Now I have done a veiled threat. So when I do a veiled threat, I can roll on a table in the Cutlass book under flattery and banter, money, money enticements, and veiled threat. I'm going to flip a card to see whether or not um, Veiled Threat works. And you can see this is just a randomizer of sorts in here. A king. A king. A favors or help may gain with flattery, money, or Veiled Threats. Indifferent makes them angry. I did not take an indifferent stance. I took a Veiled Threat that I was going to attack this man. And that king is a great card to flip. Perfect, in fact. This guy has just acquiesced and give me his hat. And I realized, you know what also would help was be a uniform right here. The old classic ploy of changing it into the enemy's uniform. If I could get an end, if I could get the uniform of a horse guardman here, I could fully 
get uh, get to um, help out the mission in the end and uh, try to get the Fabergé egg burglarized in that. They could even, I could even act as one of the guards that's, that's taking it from place to place. Gabriel wore the uniform of a horse guard, an orange and leather coat with too many buttons to be practical. I liked his green hat fringed with ostrich feathers. Take it off and hand it to me politely. He did so with a proper bow. That coat seems warm. I'm going to need it. He made a face but complied. Pants and leggings too. When he protested he would freeze, I let him keep his shoes. You can walk to that farmhouse or maybe sprint. I gave Gabriel a hard slap on his bared ass and sent him traipsing through the snow. E.I. wanted to gut him, but he settled for guffawing at the pounce, cupping his sack and high-stepping away. I gathered up the uniform, which was what I wanted all along. So many ribbons to snag and tangle. No wonder we French never seem to win wars we fight. And uh, on with, with the quest. Here comes the next card flip. It's the Hanged Man. So I read the Hanged Man, and the Hanged Man tells me... The Hanged Man says that... Uh, uh, until the deck is shuffles, ignore any personal events that are generated when selected. Uh, so skip to the next result. So I'm ignoring knaves. I'm ignoring hang. I'm ignoring personal events and skipping to the next events. Okay, so uh, no personal events. Toward evening, I saw her again. Jade, the color of her eyes. She was a noble. Her eyebrows removed with an oil scrub to make her face elongate. Indeed, fit to be painted, holding an ermine. She was disbarking for the evening and heading for a residence. A lady traveling alone. Interesting. I waved, then adopted a dashing pose, hands on hips. I pointed at her carriage and flexed an elbow. She smiled, and then waved a reply of no. She was not stuck, nor was she in need of a gallant. Her teamster, and obvious guardian, hustled her toward the open door. I waved to him as well, but he did not seem to know me in my first disguise. I could see Jade smile and slowed her pace. She would not be bullied. I blew her a kiss and she blushed. That almost made me do so in return. E.I. looked at me and exhaled. He seemed to ask if I had enough of this distraction. He wanted to steal the horses, but I knew they would just slow us down in the slush. The weather was warming and the roads were going to be a river of mud. It's trying to get us to the end here. And we're still in phase B. We need a, a good card to move us on. That would be probably a, be a 10. And a temperance card. When it rains and pours, I used to say, when these uh, uh, majors start to come out. Until the deck reshuffles, encounters are optional. Players may ignore them or apply the results. Uh, Major Terrell still apply. So, we are on a coast. We are coasting. We are trudging, uh, trudging through that late evening snow. The roads are clear. We have a new uh, uniform of the horse guards uh, that help us with the uh, in the climax. Uh, and uh, we're not affected by personal uh, events. We're not affected by knaves. And I flip another card coming down the road here. King of Swords. Now, because it's inverted, somebody who's probably uh, uh, an enemy to us, and that would either be the Baron uh, de Combe or the uh, the mayor. Flambeau, and I think Mayor Flambeau is probably the one who's going to try to approach us here. The Mayor Flambeau is going to try to capture us again. Now, the way I'm going to handle this is I'm going to go into the uh, larger rules. I'm going to go, because I'm going to need a ship battle eventually. Probably not going to get that this mission, but who knows. Or I'm going to need a larger field battle. And I can go into the field battle rules, and I can pick a skirmish, and that will count for what I'm doing here. So I'm going to take a bloody clash roll, and I'm going to take it on the skirmish tables. And I'm going to call it a, uh, a defend? Nah, it's a small arms action. So I'm going to take a small arms action here, and I'm going to try to get the secondary objective. If I can obtain a secondary objective, myself and uh, uh, EI have escaped. But until then, we're going to be exchanging blows back and forth. Now, what happens a lot with these tables is the fact that there are uh, extra damage that is caused one way or another. Player suffers this many wounds, or uh, the enemy soldiers this many wounds. We're going to set some arbitrary tallies here of 25 and 15. Now we're going to put we're going to slant it toward us because it's just the two of us. If I can get 15 15 injuries or 15 potential injuries on them before they deliver 25 to us, then I also gain the escape. Secondary objective or gaining the escape. I'm on small arms action, and I'm going to flip a card, and I get the Magician. 
Now, all the major tarot are specific to the events that they happen in. The major tarot for skirmish are different than the major tarot for personal events, different for siege and, and battery, different for a ship to ship. Now, a magician event here is the battle plan was executed poorly until the death reshuffles treat kings, queens, knights as knaves. That is an ugly card. So they have us outnumbered, obviously. They probably also have more pistol fire, uh, more ammunition than us, and it's going to be a normal barrage as we run up and down the hedgerows. Flambeau's henchmen were on us again. They were horsed and we were not. The farms were divided by a brocage, a hedgerow thicket to mark the land holdings. E and I had the ability to crawl under the trees and cross to any of the checkerboard of unplowed fields. The horsemen would have to race to the ends and gaps, then try to see from our tracks which way we scrambled. Let's take the next card here. Three of coins. Now rally three. I'm not sorry, rally, a small arms action three. A cause a diversion and draw off part of the opposing force, then the close. Uh, then use close assault on the remainder. The opponent loses two die eights and the players lose one die eight. Remember those tallies I talked about? Two die eight, it's like a hit points of sort, you know, and of course we're always flashing back to the Gygax system. Two die eight for the soldiers that um, opponent loses, seven. So if we can defeat another eight, we're gonna win, but we lost the die eight ourselves. So we lost in essence, get that die roll here, a one, terrific roll. 24, it's now 24 points to 8 points, the chance we're going to win this. But it's also, if the card suit is a coin, it is it is a coin. We double the losses, and we double the losses, which puts them at a total of 1, and us at 23. That is an excellent card. Success to accomplish the secondary adventure, uh, objective, advantage, cunning, result of 13. So I tell uh, EI that I can draw off the majority of these guys, he can come up, come up behind them and fire this um, this blunderbuss at them and send them all scattering. So it's a 13. It's a tough roll at 13, but I'm rolling three dice because I have the advantage because my character is cunning. Three dice, looking for a 13, and it is a 10. I missed it, unfortunately, and remember, of course, I am still wounded. My goal from the start was to tire them. They could decide that we could be captured more easily in town. Their resolve would be tested against ours. Whose would fail first? But we've got, we've got them thoroughly confused. It's a 23 for us versus one for them advantage. I think the next card flip will probably get us through this encounter and I can check the ignoble of uh, conflict of arms. And the Pope card, never, always never tempt fate on what bad things can possibly happen in the game of Crimson Cutlass. Players and enemy forces mixes with another army in the field. For the continuing engagement, change the bloody cash, clash from infantry to cavalry and vice versa. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to say because we've mixed on the field, again, this is all ad hoc, you make this up just as you go along, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm going to take a card. I'm going to take a card irregular. We've all mixed. They're gonna come in, they're gonna start throwing blows. We're not really using any distinctive weapons here. Regular is a catch-all for, you know, the uh, swashbuckling type of battles. And here comes my card on a regular, and it is a six. A six is typically not a very good card, but at least it's not a bane. After finding myself on the opposite end of a, uh, a fence, um, I push the victim and topple him over. Success and dispatch one opponent. That would count as a win, but I'm not stout. That's like the third time I should have been stout in this game. Ah, I need to eat more. Eat more of my um, lentils. Three, uh, two dice only, a 13 or better to win this battle, but I didn't get it. I shook the trees and an avalanche of snow cascaded down on the fools as they tried once again to cut to the chase, dismount and tunnel after us through a hedge would take a long time for any of them to claw themselves forth. There was no real disadvantage from that previous card of uh, being a, um, being a Pope, and then resulting in this uh, card of a six. I'm back to small arm action, and I flipped a two. So over to small arms actions, and I flipped a two. Is it run and gun? I know that's my friend's, uh, Tony's favorite table to roll on. I'm joking, of course. Two! 
I'm going to wait in ambush for the remaining guys to pass, and then I'm going to rise up and open fire with that blunderbuss that uh, to EI and I are sharing uh, before I fully engage. The opponent loses two die eight soldiers. That's going to be it for them. And it is. And the player only loses a D8 soldiers. Great roll. Uh, great uh, event rolls and great rolls. 21 is an overall and X and off. Uh, the mayor's men are going to be routed here. Plus, Success uh, is the uh, uh, card of sword. No, we have double losses. Doesn't matter anyway. Success and accomplish the secondary objective. If the player character is skilled trait of cunning, and I am skilled trait of cunning, the difficulty decreases by six. Am I also a spy? I certainly am a spy. And because I'm both cunning and a spy, I will roll three dice looking for an eight to accomplish the secondary adventure and win here. Two dice, seven. Well, Luckily, I won through the attrition of the battle, or else that would have been pretty um, pretty sad to have missed that roll. Several men dismounted and tried to follow, some directly and some around the longest approaches. It was their mistake. We could receive them on hands and knees, cower them with pellets of shot through the hedge. As they crossed one way, we could double back. We fired the air and sent their horses uh, behind them scattering. Their horses were worth more than any bounty on our heads. I'd forgot E.I. was a lord. He never acted like one. Not that I or my wharf prostitute mother had met many. Do I apologize for my dice? Nope, I just react to it. But I do because we won. Check off this very important one of conflict of arms. One, two, three, four ignobles out of nine, but I'm wounded. It's a difficult thing when you're wounded, but... Time goes on, as we say. And uh, next encounter of the game. Now, I could have probably checked um, Treasure's Prize and Profiteering for that as well. Or even for the last encounter, I could have checked Treasure's, Treasure's, Prize, and Pi, uh, Treasure's Profi, uh, Prizes and Profiteering for acquiring those uniforms, which are integral to the quest. Hmm. Well, I didn't check them at the time, but I'll hold that as a thought. So you only, each event, only check one ignoble. You can't double check and triple check, nor can you change them after you check. The great thing about ignobles as opposed to experience points is it forces you as a, a player to move your character into a variety of situations. You don't, you can't just sit back and be the wallflower, or you can't just sit back and be the guy, or not sit back, or boldly for, uh, charge forth every time in the battle. So let's move on with our game here. We're almost to Paris. Nope, still the road along. And let's flip another card. And we get the High Priestess. So far, the major tarot during encounters haven't affected us too much. High Priestess. Uh, the players have the option to pick any minor card from the discard pile to determine their next encounter. Ow, oh, 10. I don't know that we have a 10. Let me go back through these really quick and see. King again, I don't really want to face that one king. Knight, no tens. A couple of fives could be good. Kings are not bad. Do I want that king? By choosing a king, and there is a straight up king, it would be a king helper. Yeah, I'll choose a king. So by choosing the king as my helper here, what that'll do is I can enter an important figure of the campaign, and I'll make it the, the Baron, the Baron Dacombe, sends a representative to us. And he says that uh, he's not in favor of any of this. He wasn't in favor of the escalation. He never, he never signed on to homicide against the, uh, the normal peasantry. He realizes that the, these people, they're just, um, they're just venting their frustration. Any little happiness they can get, he's not going to be opposed to that. Baron de Combe was portly. His gut prevented him from walking his fields, and he found no saddle comfortable. He approached riding side saddle, a black attendant leading the horse. I wondered, could a crew be made from freed slaves? or were all too domesticated to risk such a life. I stood, pistol under my coat, yet ready to kill the man, as E.I. and the Baron conversed. The attendant brushed the animal and paid no attention to any of us. This was not an ambush. Decombe wanted a truce, a peace. He had no interest in escalation. He already had all he wanted, except health. He offered E.I. a purse of coins, which my patron tossed back to me. If this was the treatment I received for being the Russian's bodyguard, I was content. 
Coins along the road can go a far way. So I take my current purse of coins, ask him as well, does he know anything about this this egg that's going to be transporting? He says, yeah, it's um, just part of a collection of things that are going to be moved from uh, the small uh, rooms off of the parliamentary building and uh, are going to be into the uh, the council of the uh, king and over to his new palace. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they're just going to ride them over by horseback. Nobody thought anything of it. Everyone thinks the world is safer than it is, don't they? And so we're going to move on to our next encounter flip, and here it comes. It's going to be a queen, so the patron himself is going to intervene. Now, this is probably where E.I. tells me that uh, I'm, I, he's, he's been summoned back. He realizes that his uh, bastard brother he needs to go confront and is going to leave me out of it. Now, I try to talk him out of this, and I could probably try to do it, or I can continue the mission on alone by myself. And I think I'll continue the mission alone on by myself. So he's going to go and confront his brother elsewhere. And while that happens, he's sending me on with the horse guard's uniform in order to uh, capture the king, uh, capture the uh, Fabergé egg as it's being transferred with other household possessions from the, the um, summer palace into the winter palace. E.I. told me that the Baron confirmed that the egg was being moved from a council chamber to a new palace. It's just one of many knickknacks, so it's probably not even prized, nor will it be missed. E.I. also said he must go. Why? We seemed lucky as a pair. He insisted. His older sibling, Adam, Adam, was too close. Adam had a planned meeting with the mayor. E.I. knew he had to get to one or the other ahead of that parlay. I could not argue with him. He was the one who would live with this affair. I could go back to being anonymous just a sailor out of Marseille. And here comes the next card event, and we get a Ten of Swords. Some people are cheering right now. I know I secretly am cheering, because that is a great card. So when you get a Ten, of, a ten if we can go over to our encounter flow here. So a Ten, if we go through it, is the card a King, Queen, Knight, Knave, or Ten is the card in phase. It is a Ten, so it's Mission Consequence. And Tens are going to represent commencement of the mission. So we have moved from one phase into another, and uh, the uh, phase will change. So we've gone from phase B over to phase C. B, two, C. And after we get out of phase C, we'll go into the climax of this mission. I need to wrap this up more later.